Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about loops. Now, for those of you who took CS principles, you remember that loops or iteration is an important ingredient in the development of algorithms. All algorithms can be developed in computer science with some combination of sequence, which is basically lines of code one after another, selection, which is if statements, and iteration, which is loops. So we've already learned how to do if statements, and we've learned how to do sequence. This is the last remaining ingredient for building a general purpose algorithm, which is called iteration or looping. So I'm going to call this iteration or loops, like that. In Java, there's three types of loops. There is the for loop. There is the while loop, and then there is the for each loop. Those are the three types of loops that exist in Java. We'll cover this today, cover this on Monday, and this we'll have to wait until we learn about arrays in unit six. So a for loop works like this. There are three parts. The first part is called the initialization part of the loop. You have to set some variable. You can either declare a brand new variable or reuse one that already exists. I will create a brand new variable and I'll set it to zero here. And then you have the next part, which is called the test. So the first part is called the initialization. The second part is called the test. And the third part is called the increment. So here I'll say i is less than 5. And then the increment, I'll say i equals i plus 1. Now, as is so often the case in Java, you have an option of putting curly brackets or not. If you put curly brackets on an it, on a, uh, so in Java, you have a choice. You can use these curly brackets or not. And if you choose to use these curly brackets, then you can put multiple lines of code in here. If you don't have the curly brackets, who can tell me how many lines will be associated with the four? Miss Mythica? <laughs> Only one line. So I'm going to just leave it at one line. And I'm going to put in here system out println i. And we're going to talk a little bit about this particular loop. And we'll see, first of all, that we're creating a brand new variable. We don't have to create a brand new variable. If there was another variable previously defined called i, like this, then I could simply reuse it like that. See, I'm reusing the existing variable. But I can also declare a brand new one here, like that. And you can see here that I'm declaring a new variable and initializing it to a value of zero. And then immediately after I declare this variable, I'm going to do this test. I'm going to ask the question, is zero less than five? And the answer is yes. So then I'm going to execute the loop. This statement here runs at the end of each loop iteration. These, this only runs once before the loop starts. This runs at the beginning of each loop iteration, and this runs at the end. You can think of this statement here as sort of like being down here. I'm going to put these curly brackets in. I changed my mind. You can think of this being like sort of like down here, but it's not. It's positioned up here. So my question for you is how many times will this loop run? What values of i will be printed? You discuss this with your partner for just a minute. Mr. Sawyer, if you were this loop, sir, how many times would you run? Five times is right, sir. Sir, can you tell me what values of i you would run for? That's right, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's run this puppy. You can see it ran for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It ran five times. Now, we don't usually write i equals i plus 1 because there's a shortcut available in Java. We can write it like this. Alternatively, we can also write it like this. Here, it doesn't matter if we're doing a pre-increment or a post-increment. I'm just going to write it like this because that's my own habit. 
but this will work exactly the same way. Let me show you that. You can see it produces the same results. Now I'm going to change this slightly. And I'd like you to try and figure out how many times will this loop run and what values of I will be printed. Try and figure that out now. Mr. Sneed, can you tell me, sir, how many times will this loop run? Three times, sir. And what values of I will it run for? Zero, two, and four. So you can see it runs like that. Now you notice here that it still compiles even if this part is missing, the increment part. I've moved the increment down here. Who can tell me how many times will this loop run and for what values of i? Mr. Pandali, sir, how many times will the loop run now? Yes, it's the same thing. Very good, sir. Let's run it again. So you can see that it's possible to do that. We don't usually write loops like that. We usually put it in here. But I just wanted to mention to you that this part was optional. Let's keep going now and see why we might want to use a loop. So a lot of things we can do with loops, one of the things we can do is we can manipulate strings. So I'm going to go through some of the problems on coding bat with you on strings. We'll start with some real easy ones. OK, here's string two. And uh, let's look at this one. We want to take the original string and create another version of it, which uses each letter twice. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So you can see if they give us the word the, we want to return this other word that has each letter in it twice. So to do this, we're going to do something called parsing the string. Parsing means examine one at a time. So if we want to parse the string, we're going to take this word the, and we're going to look at each letter one at a time. So to do that, I'm going to create, first of all, an answer variable. And I'm going to set it to be empty initially. That's the empty string. And each time I come across a new character in my string parameter, I'm going to add two copies of it to my answer variable. So I'm going to say for int i. Now I should mention to you that the letters i, j, and k, for historical reasons having to do with a much older programming language called Fortran, uh, I, J, and K are typically loop indexes. That's what they've always been, and so that we will not change any of the uh, customs here from existing programmers. We'll just use I, J, and K as our loop parameters. So I'm going to start off at zero because the first index is starting at zero, and I'm going to stop when I get to how many characters the string has. Who can tell me how do I ask the string? How many characters do you have? Ms. Saludkar, how do I ask it? The length here. And I'm going to go plus plus i. And now I want to grab the character. I want to grab the character that's at this position. Now, if I go like this, if I go str.substring001, that would grab the character at the first position. If I go like this, that would grab the character at position two or the third position that starts at zero. How do I grab the character at the ith position? Mr. Sneed, I think I heard you mumbling it. What is it, sir? And then what, what's the next one there? What's the next one? I only want one character, sir, so I plus one. Very good. So this grabs me the character, and I want two copies of it, so I'll do it twice. And I want to concatenate them together, so I'll go like that. And then I'll put over here answer equals answer plus 
the next two characters like that. So I'm going through this string. I'm grabbing each character. Um, I'm duplicating it. And I'm adding it to my answer variable. And when I'm all done, the last thing I do is I return the answer. Like that. Now I'm going to say go. And that one seemed to work out OK. I'm going to do a couple more of these with you, and then I'm going to let you run with it. Let's go to the next one. We want, the, we want to count how many times the word high appears in the string. Looks like it's the lowercase high. Here in this string right here, it appears twice. Sorry, appears once. Here it appears twice. And here it appears twice. So we want to count them. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a for loop. I'm going to ask you to figure out what goes in there. And then we're going to have an if statement. We're going to say if something equals something. Oh, let me set up an answer variable. Uh, int count equals zero. That's my answer variable. And then when we get to the end, we're going to return the count like that. And we're going to adjust the count here if we get a match for the word high. And um, I'm going to give you a little hint on this because this is the first place you're going to trip up. For int i equals zero, i is less than stir dot length plus plus i. And what would go here, by the way? Who can tell me how can I grab the next two characters and compare them to the word high? What would I put over here? And what would I put over here? Just as a reminder, this is how I compare two strings. I'll ask the easy question first. What goes over here? Let's see. Uh, Mr. Degouge, what goes over there, sir? So that's just going to be high like that. And here, I'll give you a hint. It's str.substring. And now I just have to figure out what goes there and there. So, Mr. Ongod, what goes here, sir? Any idea? Um, I, and I, uh, I and I plus one. Sir, it would be I plus one if I was checking one character at a time. But how many characters am I grabbing here, sir? Two. So what am I going to put here? I plus two. Now, how are we going to adjust the count? Miss Tamara, how can we adjust the count like that? Now, you'll notice that when we run this, it won't work. You can see that it's all like all red and stuff. Red is bad. So now I claim that this was a problem. If you can't figure it out, consider what happens when I get near the end of the string. Okay, look at this string right here. Look at this string right here. And uh, imagine that you're right here on this O. You're right, what, looking at the O and you're trying to figure out if it contains the word high or not. So you're going to do this substring. What's going to happen when you do this substring I and I plus two at this position O? Yes, Ms. Rhea? Out of bounds. You're going to get an out of bounds exception. So. Since we're grabbing two letters at a time, we can't really afford to go to the very last letter. So we need to make an adjustment right here. And I want to know what kind of adjustment do you think we can make here? Miss Erda, minus one is right, sir. And then I have to show you that this will work. And then I have to explain to you why it's not minus two. Okay. So let's try the minus one. And you can see it all worked. See that? It all worked. And now we want to know, how come if I'm grabbing two characters, it's a minus one and not a minus two? Yeah, it doesn't include the I plus two position. It stops one short. So that's why there's only a minus one here. 
it'll take you a while to get used to all these little